Hello, this is Andrew Connell, and I'm a SharePoint developer and instructor. In this screencast, we're going to demonstrate how to create custom quick access buttons and add them to the page editing toolbar within a Moss 2007 web content management publishing site. In order to add a new button to the page editing toolbar, we have to create a class that's going to inherit from a special class that Microsoft provides in the publishing namespace. We're going to put it in an assembly that has been assigned to create a strong name. We're going to deploy it to the GAC, add a safe control entry to the web config to, of the site where we're going to use it to make sure that it knows that it's okay uh, to load the control. And then we're going to go into a special XML file in the page editing gallery, oh, sorry, in the master page gallery that's going to register our button uh, so that SharePoint knows to load it at the appropriate time. What I've done here is started with a C Sharp uh, class library, standard C Sharp class library project. I've added references to the Microsoft.SharePoint, Microsoft.SharePoint Publishing, and System.Web namespaces. I've done a little bit of extra stuff right here to make the uh, deployment process a little bit easier by packaging up automatically uh, creating WSP files uh, that we can use to, uh, for our deployment. There's another screencast that demonstrates how this is done. And um, I've also gone through and uh, added a, um, a key file, uh, key pair file, so that we can go in and when we uh, compile the project that will be a, have a strong name applied to it. Now our class publishing, pa publishing page properties action what our page is going to do is we simply want it to take us to the properties page uh, within a SharePoint site uh, for the particular page that we're on. So what this class does is we're inheriting from the console action class which you'll find inside of the Microsoft.SharePoint.Publishing.WebControls.Editing Menu Actions uh, namespace. Now inside this class we need to do a few things. First of all, I'm going to create a private string here that we can use to store a uh, we can use to specify an image URL. I'm going to also create a constructor here and the constructor is just going to set the title uh, of the button that we want to show up. And we're going to set the display text equal to page properties. The next thing we have to do, so that's the text that's going to show up when the button is rendered. The next thing we have to do is we need to specify the rights. Who's going to be allowed to see this button? We want everybody to be able to see it. So I'm going to override the user rights property and I'm going to simply return an empty mask, which basically says anybody is going to be able to see this. I then need to say when is the button going to show up? So under certain conditions we want it to show up. In this case, I want it to show up essentially all the time. So under the I'm going to override the required states property and I'm going to say I want to display this guy whenever the uh, editing menu is enabled. So whenever the page editing menu is turned on, that's when we want to be able to see it. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to specify the image URL. So what I'm going to say here is I'm going to say, let's see, override the image URL and inside the getter I'm going to check to see if we've already, if we specified what the image uh, URL is. And if we have not, if it's null or empty, then I simply want to return the path to a specific image. So I'm going to use one of the, one of the images that's provided uh, inside SharePoint out of the box. Otherwise, we're going to return the URL, the image that's been uh, specified. Now the last thing we want to do is we need to tell it what happens when we click on the button. So in this case, I'm going to override the navigate URL property and just override the getter. Now in this case, we need to get an instance. We want to point to the specific uh, property page for this item. So I'm going to first get an instance of the current uh, publishing web or the SP web uh, for the site that we're in. So I'm going to get the publishing web, which is going to be in the Microsoft.SharePoint.Publishing.Publishing web object. We'll call this the pub web equals. We need to get the same publishing. We need to get the publishing web object, and say get publishing web and pass in the current web that we're in.
could a using statement there made it a little bit easier. The next thing we need to do is we need to issue a query to get the current page uh, that is that we're on. Uh, we need to specifically get the object the page it's on that we're on. Um, so what we're going to do is create a new SP query object. So SP query object, and this is going to be a camel query. So we're just going to say, um, sorry, not SP query. We'll do a string dot uh, for a query here. We'll say string dot format. We need to create a where clause uh, where it's equal where the field reference name equals where the ID or the value of that and the type of that field is a counter And we will pass in the SP context dot current dot um, list item ID. The next thing we do is we need to get an instance of that page using the query. So I'll create a publishing page. Make our lives a little bit easier, and we'll just add this as a using statement at the top. the page we will call the pub web uh, get publishing pages and pass in the query and that's going to give us a collection back we know we're only going to have one in the collection so I'm just going to say grab the first item in the collection and now we need to craft the URL that we want to send people to when they click on the button so I'm going to say string we're going to return string dot format it's going to be a Java we're going to use JavaScript to change the uh, window location to let's see here something uh, slash something slash form slash display form ASPX with a parameter of something and the root folder will be something yet something else in the quote and the thing there we go now let's go through and add in our different parameters the first one we need to pass in is the URL of the, of the site that we're in. So I'm just going to look at the page, uh, get the publishing web that this page is in, get the URL, and pass, create to, and add call to string to get the URL there. I then need to get the uh, um, folder uh, of the list or get the list that we're in. So go for the page, list item, uh, parent list dot root folder get the URL for that folder. Uh, the next thing I need to do is we need to pass in the ID. So page, uh, list item, ID to string. And lastly, we need to get the um, URL of the root folder. Pass in the same thing that we passed in uh, just above this. So we go like this, close it off, close the quote, and compile and hope everything works. Everything built, that's good. Uh, so we go back and look in our manifest to make sure it's being deployed to the GAC. We're in good shape there. So let's go ahead. Now that he's been created, we now should have a WSP created that we can then deploy the WSP. So or deploy the solution. Now that the solution has been deployed, let's go in and, or been uh, added to the solution store, let's go in and deploy the solution. We will then go to the Operations tab in Central Administration, go to Solution Management, find the project, the solution that we created, and deploy it.
with the project or with the assembly deployed, the next thing we have to do is to go into uh, the master page gallery and modify an XML file. So I have the our project or our site already opened up inside of uh, SharePoint Designer. I'm then going to navigate navigate down into the master page gallery. So I go into catalogs, master page, and I now have this editing menu, or I had this all along. This is where we're going to put our customizations. You'll see that we have one for the editing menu, one for site quick access, one for site actions, and one for the uh, rich text editor uh, toolbar. We're going to want the quick access. I'm going to open them up and check them out. And I've already created the file here, and I put it in our project. So I'm going to copy this out, and I'll paste it in, and explain what we're looking at here. What you've got here, this is very similar to, um, it, it's somewhat similar to working with an ASPX or an ASCX file in uh, ASP.NET. What we have is two sections, a reference section and a structure section. The reference section, you can think of this as the same way as how we register uh, controls uh, using the register directive. What I have to do here is we have to get put in a reference uh, point and put in what is the tag pref prefix, what is the assembly that contains the button, and the namespace that contains the button. I'm then going to look in the structure section and find this console node. What it's going to do is it's going to say, Add in, using the config menu option, add in a new button. The sequence is one, so put it right at the front of the list. When should it be hidden? This is the, the different times when it should be hidden. This is a bit field, or a bit mass field. This is the action. Now what this is, this is the same thing as like what we would normally use as server control inside of an ASPX file. So it's the tag prefix and then the name of the class that we created. And then I have to give it a unique ID. We can't have two buttons or two menu items inside the page editing menu have two different IDs. So the technique I like to use is the same name as the class, and then if it's going to be a quick access button, put quick access button, or if it's something else, then we're going to use a different name. We'll save our changes. Uh, check the file in. Check it in. Say publish. It's going to ask us, do we want to approve it? And we'll say yes. It's going to open up a browser. It didn't like that. That's fine. We'll go to the master page gallery again, and we'll find that file and publish it. Inside the editing menu, we will find our file, which we will approve or reject it. I will approve it. And now we have to go back to our site. When we turn on the page editing menu, we now see our new button, page properties. Uh, if we clicked on this, it would take us to uh, the URL that we put in the navigate URL property. That's how we create new buttons and add them to the page editing toolbar.